Hello, my name's Bronte Holt. I'm an Interventional Endoscopy Fellow at Westmead Hospital in Sydney, Australia. Today I'll be talking about a study that we've recently published in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, where we've performed a prospective cohort study looking at patients who have had wide-field colonic endoscopic mucosal resection, comparing two groups that were performed with air compared to carbon di dioxide insufflation. Colonoscopy with polypectomy is a fundamental tool for colorectal cancer prevention, reducing the anticipated incidence and mortality of colorectal cancer by 80% and 50% in long-term follow-up studies. Large sessile lesions greater than a centimetre in size are removed by endoscopic mucosal resection. One of the feared complications of EMR is perforation of the colon and this occurs in between 1 and 2% of cases. Pain and recovery is not an uncommon thing and the differentials include perforation but also gaseous distension, excessive transmural injection of the submucosal injection fluid and serositis. And the differentiation between these problems can be challenging. Often persistent pain and recovery requires an investigation and consultation cascade with attendant costs and potential morbidity and usually these patients require a hospital admission. Level 1 evidence shows that carbon dioxide insufflation during routine colonoscopy reduces patients' pain and gaseous distension on plain abdominal x-rays. However, what's not, not known is whether patients' admissions are influenced by the use of carbon dioxide and it's not known whether performing colonic EMR with carbon dioxide influences post-EMR outcomes. We transitioned to carbon dioxide in early 2010 in our proceduralist rooms and this provided an excellent opportunity for us to compare two cohorts, those that had EMRs performed with air compared to those performed with carbon dioxide. I'm now going to show you the uh, setup for using carbon dioxide in your procedural rooms. We have a generator down here uh, which is needed to be bought by the unit and this is attached at the back to our carbon dioxide bottle. We use an air water bottle which requires a different top and then this is connected through the generator and attaches to the scope in the normal way. The top of the bottle and the tubing are processed by its normal methods and this tubing can be changed to either a small, medium or large tubing depending on the flow of carbon dioxide that's required. Over a 20 month period, 347 patients had their EMRs performed with air insufflation finishing in March 2010. Then we had a four month transition to carbon dioxide, following which 228 patients had their procedures performed with carbon dioxide insufflation. When we compared the two groups, they were similar in regards to age, gender, lesion characteristics and the technical outcomes, in addition to procedural duration. Overall, the hospital admission rates were significantly reduced when we looked at the carbon dioxide group from 8.9% to 3.4% and this represented a 62% overall decrease in admission rates. When we looked at the types of admissions, this was primarily due to admissions for pain. When we looked at a multivariate analysis, we found that the independent predictors of admissions was increasing procedural duration, increasing patient age, and primarily that the procedures were performed with air rather than carbon dioxide insufflation. Other factors such as uh, complications with, per with perforations were similar between the two groups. So importantly, using carbon dioxide insufflation for your colonic EMRs can significantly change your practice and we found that it's really revolutionised what we do. And we would recommend that using carbon dioxide insufflation for colonic EMRs should be instituted into your practice.